Fannie Willis office corruption continues today. Today is August or uh, April 10th, 2024. And uh, I've got some news that I want to share with you guys today regarding Fannie Willis. And it looks like she is unfortunately out of time, folks. And it's not looking good. It's not looking good here. Uh, if you guys are able to see and hear me okay in here, please drop a quick comment. Make sure that uh, that the audio is good before we get this thing started here. Uh, so as you guys know, Fannie Willis is the district attorney that has uh, basically brought charges against Donald Trump, as well as initially 18 other co-defendants in the Georgia elections interference case. Now, four of those co-defendants that were on trial during this Donald Trump trial in Fulton County, Georgia, I believe, if I remember correctly, they took plea deals. And so this is why there are fewer co-defendants on trial today. However, there have been a lot of uh, insights shared, discovered, leaked, dropped during this case that Fannie Willis has not benefited from. In fact, this is actually kind of backfired in her face as she did not expect for this information to be shared or discovered in, in the, at the very least. But here we have today Harrison Floyd, who is a, a rather stately gentleman who happens to be one of the co-defendants on this Fannie Willis, uh, Donald Trump. Georgia election interference investigation case, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he was the only person out of all of these co-defendants that went to jail. That's one thing. But the thing is, Harrison Floyd actually has some dirt. And he issued a warning previously. And this Warning, the date for which this warning was supposed to uh, take place has now expired. So now he's left to take action. And this is very, this is not good news for Fannie Willis. In fact, Fannie Willis may be facing felony charges based on what we're uh, seeing here from uh, Harrison Floyd, who happens to be the former leader of the Black Voices for Trump who alleged that Fannie Willis illegally recorded a telephone call with his attorney in an unrelated criminal case in Maryland. And this is some damning evidence here, or this is some damning uh, uh, allegations here, because, uh, you know, essentially Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis, she had until the middle of the day on Monday, it was actually noon Monday, which would have been April the 8th, to recuse herself from the Donald Trump Georgia election interference case or, and this is the, this is the key part here, or face legal action according to a warning from the former president, uh, from one of the former president's co-defendants. In this case, it was Harrison Floyd. Now, I'm going to share something with you guys. But before I do, all I ask is that you take one second, hit the like button for the video. Uh, and I want to thank you guys, as always, for sharing these videos uh, on Facebook, Twitter, and all your favorite social media. Uh, who's in the live here right now? Just just drop me a quick hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got Brilliant Radio. What's up, brother? Uh, thank you for confirming. Okay, so Freddy Cat, Cat, all good. Awesome. We got Steve Clark in the house. Uh, have you missed a live? No, we're still live, man. We still on here. Um, all right. We got, uh, we got Keith Van, o Van over. We got Wayne. Tr okay, cool. Dallas Haskins gaming. Awesome. So, uh, Donald Trump became the, re the presumptive Republican nominee for the 2024 presidential election in March. But this is, this is why, this is why a lot of critics of the Democratic judges in New York City, um, all of the different cases that have been miraculously popping up, targeting Donald Trump. Many people believe that this is all a highly coordinated scheme to prevent him from becoming the 2024 president. Uh, president. 
Now, here is a quick update from Harrison Floyd. Harrison Floyd says, I don't want to put a black woman in jail. This is on uh, Harrison Floyd's Twitter page, aka X, uh, X page. But if at Fannie for DA does not recuse herself from this case by noon on Monday, I have no other choice than to pursue all le- all lawful remedies. Make Fulton great again. And um, so uh, I can see here there's a uh, there's a cutout from the AJC. Willis's office provided the Atlanta Journal Constitution with a recording of a phone call Willis made that same day to attorney Carlos J.R. Salvador, who is Floyd's attorney in an unrelated criminal case in federal court in Maryland. In the call, she explained that she had sent a representative to meet with Floyd at the jail when he turned himself in. Floyd told Salvador that Floyd, excuse me, Willis told Salvador that Floyd was offered a consent bond at the time, but he refused it. So this appears to be a screenshot from the AJC. As you can see here, So um, this kind of looks like proof to me. This looks like proof to me, but this is only the beginning. So let's just hear from Harrison Floyd and what he had to say about this. Last week, my attorney and I made it public that District Attorney Willis very likely violated the Maryland Wiretapping Act, which is a felony here in Maryland. As far as we are aware, D.A. Willis did not have a warrant and the call was not made in furtherance of law enforcement because I was already in custody. She simply broke the law. The truth is D.A. Willis did not like the public backlash she was receiving and over the course of multiple calls, she tried to find a way out of the mess that she created. She also made the claim that I denied a consent bond which is a lie. The truth is simple and quite frankly sad. D.A. Willis is blinded by her upbringing, which was deeply rooted in radical progressive ideology and racism. She has no problem weaponizing her skin or her office to further its aims. While my skin is also black, D.A. Willis identifies me as white and views me as a defender of white supremacists due to my political beliefs. Wow. Deep down, she wants to make me pay for what she feels is a betrayal to black culture. Her words and actions consistently demonstrate a hate for white people and a need to make this case about race. Wow. Wow. So is this what Judge McAfee has been bringing up constantly? Um, You guys know that uh, Judge Scott McAfee, he's the judge that's presiding over the Fannie Willis, Donald Trump, Georgia election interference case in Fulton County, Georgia. And Judge Scott McAfee kept bringing up the fact that, you know, uh, basically saying, you know, don't use the race card or, um, you know, don't make this a race thing. I mean, and. According to Harrison Floyd, it looks like this may have been the underlying driving factor all along, unless I've missed something. You guys let me know. Um, Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, Starsha Garcia, thank you for joining. One of our amazing members here. Um, But let me let me hear the let's hear the rest of what Harrison Floyd has to say here. She has disrespected Judge McAfee and defense attorneys because of the color of their skin. Wow. It's racist and it's wrong. After my attorneys finish working on the appeal Judge McAfee granted, we will bring a motion asking the court to exercise its judicial power on equal protection grounds. Wow. Because racism in any form is wrong. I, along with a lot of you, would like a speedy resolution However, this is more than likely going to take time due to the district attorney's unprofessional, overly aggressive, and untruthful nature. 
This is, let me be clear that this is not an effort to delay justice or attack the district attorney because of her race or sex. It's because she actually broke the law in the same manner she's falsely accusing me of. Wow. Wow. This is a bombshell, guys. This is huge, okay? This is not the kind of information, this is not the type of confession that the district attorney on a case where she's currently possibly about to get removed from needs to have leaked out. And this is on top of the fact that the judge presiding over the case has already called out essentially saying uh, that there is a uh, there, there is a an air of uh, of a conflict of interest that that exists here. We, we, we can't we can't we, we can't have that. Now, Christy Leesman says, play it again. <laughs> um, what's going on, Kid Metal 38, 3887? We got Rob K in here. Um, let me know if you guys want me to play that again. Um, but you guys could just kind of rewind that and listen to it again if you like. But uh, let me know if you guys want me to play that again. Just hit me up in the comments. But uh, but here's, here's something else that um, Harrison Floyd had shared. Uh, says here that the Maryland Wiretap Act makes it a felony to record any telephone or electronic communication unless one is a party to the communication and all other parties give their consent. This is what was shared also on Harrison Floyd's uh, Twitter page. Um, this is this is massive, guys. This is this is this is a big deal. This is a big deal. This is a felony in uh, Maryland, uh, at least according to uh, Harrison Floyd. And it, it looks like his attorney uh, seemed to have the same sentiment that this would be a felony in um, in Maryland. Excuse me. Um, wow. Yeah. Harrison Floyd shared the screenshots of an article purportedly from the Atlanta Journal Constitution which claims Willis's team had shown the publication a recording of some sort from a conversation the district attorney had with Carlos J.R. Salvador, Salvador uh, who represents uh, Harrison Floyd in the Maryland criminal case. So Floyd is essentially suggesting that Fannie Willis's office may have violated the Maryland Wiretap Act, under which, according to Maryland, or according to the information that we have here, uh, is unlawful to record any private in-person conversation or telephone communication unless you're a party to the conversation and have the permission from all parties. Apparently, Harrison Floyd, I guess, didn't consent to this. This is what it appears as though has happened. So this this detail is a big problem for Fannie. Um, and Harrison Floyd doesn't want to put a black woman in jail. Harrison Floyd doesn't want. Oh, and then under according to. Uh, OK, so it looks like under Maryland's wiretap act, recording a private conversation without consent from both parties is punishable up to five years in prison a fine of up to $10,000 or both. So this is, Maryland doesn't treat this as, uh, it's not It's not like, you know, a little bit of an issue for Maryland. It looks like Maryland's making a big issue out of that, given, given the uh, level of punishment that would be uh, applicable in that type of a situation. Um. Yeah. So uh, drop me some comments, guys. Drop me some comments. Let me know what you think about this. Um, again, this is the same case. You know, this this is this is Harrison Floyd is the co-defendant on the same case as being overseen by Judge Scott McAfee, um, who in March accused Fannie Willis of having a tremendous lapse in judgment concerning her relationship with special prosecutor Nathan Wade. So my question here is, is this another example of a, a lapse in judgment? Um, it's what do you guys think about this? Keep in mind, 
Judge uh, Scott McAfee decided to leave both, uh, excuse me, Judge Scott McAfee decided to allow both Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade to pick who should leave the case. Nathan Wade left, Fannie Willis is still here. But right now, Donald Trump's attorney, lead attorney, Steve Sadeau, has issued a interlocutory appeal. He submitted this motion and we're now waiting to find out if they're going to, in fact, remove Fannie Willis completely from the case. I'm going to keep you guys posted. Like I said, I promised uh, that I would keep you guys posted. Updates keep coming out rapidly. And uh, and there's a lot to there's a lot to unpack here. So uh, let me jump in the comments right quick. I just want to see what you guys are saying. Where are you guys are watching? Where are you guys watching from? Are you at home? Are you at work? What state are you watching from? Because what is wild here is that this is a Georgia election interference case, but Donald Trump has fans and um, and supporters all around the country. So even I mean, look at this. We got Annie uh, Messina from Alaska. We got Debbie Riddle from Northeast Florida. Dallas Haskin Gaming, he's at home. Dallas Haskin Gaming, you playing Call of Duty? Or are, you, are you getting some work done, man? No, I'm just kidding. Um, Steve Marshall, Miss uh, Missoula, okay. Um, let's see, is that Missoula, Montana? Okay. We got Christy Leesman, she's at home. Buckeye girl here, I see you. We got uh, Kenneth Thomas from Colorado. Kim Cheryl, Mi Kim Cheryl, Missouri fan. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. Like I said, this is a Georgia election interference case, but you know, the, the, the people who, who support Donald Trump are, I was going to say countrywide, but they may even be worldwide for all I know. So people want to know what's going on here. And the American people want to know what's going on with our judicial system. What's up with this lawfare where you use the legal system to attack people? This is a dangerous precedent being set, folks. Very dangerous. So anyway, uh, if you haven't already, hit the like button, share this video with someone, uh, a friend, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys for, for rocking with me. I got a lot more that I'm going to be sharing with you guys later today. So make sure your notification bell is turned on. I don't, and, and let me know if you got notifications for this video, because I, I saw a lot of you guys mentioning that you didn't get a notification and, and you're wondering how am I live without that notification going out. So let me know if you didn't get a notification or if you did. Uh, if you don't have your notification bell turned on, hit the hit the red bell, um, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Y'all be safe and uh, take care.